Knights at your ready, Leon. Oh. Excellent. You feel invincible, even though you can hit the dirt, break bones or anything else. It's just the curiosity of impact, the adrenaline rush, the way you get pumped up by the audience, by the horses. The crashing violence of medieval jousting brings a loud and approving roar from the crowd, just as it did five centuries ago. There's nothing choreographed about what they're seeing out there. This is the real deal. It's one of the original extreme sports. When you stop to think about, you know, motocross or a demolition derby, think about that. You're using cars. Well, we do it, but we're on horses in full armor. And that armor is there to protect your life. These knights are a company of jousters known quite appropriately as the freelancers. They compete around the country in tournaments like the one at the Renaissance Festival in Arrington. There is an Arrington, England, but this one is in Tennessee. No matter which side of the pond the game is played, jousting is a team sport. Care for the horses first, the knights second. So without the horse, you don't have a knight. Lay on! They are part of a team. A person and horse are one unit. Remember when the Native Americans first saw the Spanish come over on their Spanish Norman horses, they thought they were one creature. You're partnered with an amazing animal with an incredible heart. As we get ready to go into the list, you've got your helmet on, the rest of the world goes away. Your perspective is through a 3 16 inch slot in your helmet, that's all you see. And your heart rate sinks with your horse and you begin to communicate in all those nonverbal ways. They give you signals, you give them to them. You get a lance in your hand, and it's on. Long before picking up the lance, before the cheering, screaming crowds in the arena, the Knights face an even more difficult challenge here in the hills of Westmoreland. Not England, but Tennessee. It is here where they must train, drill, and gain the trust of these near 2,000 pound animals. Ho, 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 ho. Every horse is unique and different. Some of them make it very quickly. Some of them never make it at all because the horse has to trust you. We get them used to having someone on their back. Then we get them used to listening to all the different commands. Come G, come G. An ex-movie and TV stunt man more than two decades ago, Roy Cox took his skills in both riding horses and falling off them to start a whole new career in jousting. He's the founder of the freelancers here in his own backyard arena, he trains Country. even rescue horses to be mighty steeds that stand strong in come the up. face of combat. Step up. Now, come on. We come do up. a very come unusual up. style of riding that is a cross between Western, hunter, and jumper. By combining those three into a style, anyone who's trained on a horse elsewhere has a hard time dealing with it because it's three different disciplines thrown into one. Roy's neighbor, friend, and fellow freelancer Gene Martino is part of a training tag team. He also happens to be a Methodist minister who pastors two churches in the community. Horses are like churches. Left to their own devices, most of them will eat themselves to death. Uh, most of them will do things to injure themselves and think they're helping themselves. You cannot just get on a horse and go along for the ride. You've got to be attuned to what their weaknesses are, their strengths. Horses are great teachers and you've got to learn to speak their language. Every horse is different. Every church is different and there's a lot of grace involved in that. The hard part is getting them to run toward each other. Horses will try to assert alpha and whoever's the alpha in the herd runs the others off but you get them to run toward each other by walking, just slowly walking past each other. And once they build up the trust with that, then you go up to a trot. T-R-O-T, you saw when we were out there, I was spelling out the word T-R-O-T instead of saying it, because if I'd said that, they'd go, okay, we're going. You're fine, you're fine. They've got a small vocabulary, but what they know, they know. In working with the horses, you slowly build up a psychic link, pretty much, between them. They know you, you know them. No, 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 and a lot of times no, no, you don't have to no, say no. a thing, Step you up. think it. Then you give them the, the light cues with your legs or your hands, and then the horse responds. And when you get that bond with a horse, there's nothing better. Keep him going, working forward, good, good. 
But when the training is successful, the reward is in the day of the games, when preparation, anticipation, and passion culminate in dramatic fashion, as men and sometimes women become knights in shining armor with their horses ready for battle. They are athletes. Horse can be so docile and calm backstage, and then you get him out there, and they know game's on. They get excited, they wanna do it, they wanna perform. And the more they do it, the more they look forward to it, because it's their chance to shine. I'm Steve Hall, on the Wild Side.